did God create some of us with a vocation of suffering? This person must be Catholic. Sometimes I feel like my purpose is to suffer for others. Sometimes we've heard, you know, people say this person's like a suffering soul mm -hmm. or something like that. So is there a vocation mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. that or what do you think? Yeah. Uh, absolutely. I mean, I mean that whole idea goes back to Jesus Himself. Uh, in one of the the uh, key areas of suffering that I didn't bring up uh, in the last uh, section of the show was, um, you know, that Jesus Himself saw another huge reason for suffering, and that was self-sacrifice for others, self-sacrifice for the church, and self-sacrifice for the good of the world and the kingdom. So essentially, uh, that whole idea of self-sacrifice as love, self-sacrifice as gift of self, which is love for Jesus, right? That idea that self-sacrifice, that love could be shared by the Father, right? So, so you create a grace. So self-sacrifice is like creating love, which is like a grace. It's a powerful, uh, you know, a grace that goes outside of itself and that that grace that you create through your self-sacrifice willingly offered to the Father, that grace the Father can give to whomever he wishes, right? To Could be the souls in purgatory, could be a person that you know, could be a group you know, could be for the world, could be for the church in the world. And, uh, and of course, St. Paul picks up on this idea, absolutely picks up on this idea in the letter to the Colossians. Remember when he says that, uh, you know, I count it, you know, uh, a privilege that, you know, I can make up for what is lacking in the sufferings of Christ. He doesn't mean anything is intrinsically lacking in the sufferings of Christ, right? I mean, Christ did it all in order to redeem humankind. What he means by that, and that word lacking, you know, it's not a good translation of the Greek. Mm -hmm. What he means is that Jesus left some room, some space for us to play a vital role in salvation. So Jesus, I, 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 I want it, I, I'm glad I can suffer so that I too can offer my suffering in self-sacrifice for the good of the church, uh, the body of Christ, says Paul. So the, the, the key idea here is that yes, that you can actually take those sufferings mm -hmm. and you can offer it up for a variety of things, literally as Jesus did, literally as St. Paul did. Of course, we, this whole idea of suffering as a vocation goes into the Desert Fathers. And so many of them, the Desert Fathers, speak about suffering as a vocation, that is to say, an, an, a willing, you turn your suffering into w a self-sacrifice that you want to give to others. So you offer your self-sacrifice to the Father that turns it into a gift of love, it turns it into a gift of self, a powerful grace that the Father can share with wh whomever he wishes or whomever you designate. So, so it, it could be anything like that. So the, the, I, and of course, I don't have to tell you, not just the church fathers, but right, uh, the whole you know, uh, tradition of, of the recluses and the hermits, right, that goes all the way through Julian of Norwich, who very much you know, offered her sufferings. I, I mean, we, I mean, there's literally hundreds of saints. I mean, I'm just mm -hmm. touching the, the very surface. I mean, you go to St. Therese of Lisieux, uh, you know, in, in, in uh, the early part of the tw uh, late, uh, uh, part of the last century and the early part of the 20th century, you see in her the remarkable appreciation of uh, the vocation of suffering, where she says, I, I've got a short life, I've got a life where I'm suffering all the time, right? But you know, this is her little way. Mm -hmm. And you have to read the diaries of St. Therese of Lisieux because in those diaries, she articulates so beautifully how, you know, not only her belief and her faith that God turns her suffering into the powerful grace that's going to save sinners, right? She's actually saying, who do I want this to go to? I want this to go to sinners who are completely unrepentant. And she's got a few of these people in mind, right. some kind of arch criminal types, mm -hmm. right? And she's actually designating, you know, please, you know, use the grace that you, and actually uh, she really did turn the hearts of some people 
through her, you know, uh, God's, uh, you know, you know, giving, you know, her, her graces uh, to those people. And so she, she felt very much that that was a part of her vocation. But you have to read her spiritual diary. By the way, the, her whole spiritual diary is free of charge online. You can just put St. Therese of Lisieux and, and put, you know, diary online and you can get it there free of charge. It's, it's just something really edifying to read. And I mean, in the current age, there are many people to, like, uh, there was a, a, a book called All I Can Give about a quadriplegic flat on his back mm -hmm. and writing about the same vocation to suffering. One of your viewers, by the way, Doug, actually gave me that book. I had lent it to somebody and I had lost it and, and I had mentioned it on a previous show and, and they gave me oh, wow. a, a copy of it. And that's another beautiful book as well. So there's, yes, there's huge precedent for it, of course, beginning with Jesus, St. Paul, but throughout the entire history of the church. And it really is a huge part of medieval spirituality, very much a part of St. Therese of Lisieux and others.